Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I'm with Rogers Corporation Advanced Circuit Materials. I am a marketing development engineer. And today what I'm going to talk about for the next few minutes is how to look at data sheets, deciphering the information there, making sense of that information, and uh, how that can be useful for high speed and high frequency uh, printed circuit boards. So I'm going to take as an example the 4450 and the 4003 data sheet. I'm using that as an example because it has all the uh, properties and information on there that most high frequency uh, laminate data sheets do have. And uh, on that data sheet, as well as most data sheets in the high frequency industry, what you'll find is most of these properties are, um, are brought out in about three different categories. There's usually about three categories how this data sheet is uh, split up. And the categories are generally circuit design, circuit fabrication, and reliability issues. Now, one caution I'll mention about the, uh, the data sheets in general, uh, it's pretty common for designers and engineers to compare different materials by the data sheets, and that's fine, but you have to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. And in this particular case, I'd like to look at a uh, PowerPoint slide here that's showing the different uh, materials, and the background data sheet is actually the 4350 material. And you can see in the case of thermal conductivity that we have a test method that's ASTM C518. And another material that's similar to the Rogers material, but it is a different material, they also report a thermal conductivity, a different number, it's pretty significantly different, but they also are doing a different test method to get that number. And because of that, you're really not comparing apples to apples. It is thermal conductivity, but there are some differences. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at data sheets. Make sure you do have the same test methods. Make sure you do have the same uh, units that you're looking at. Things are tested at the same temperature and same frequency, same everything, if you wanted to do a good comparison apples to apples. Um, then as you look at data sheets that is uh, more related toward the uh, circuit design, the categories on the data sheets for circuit design that are most important is usually uh, dielectric constant or DK. And I'm not going to talk about that too much in this Coonrod's Corner. That's going to be a follow-on one. And I will talk about design DK. But along those lines, dissipation factor is a property of the material that shows the dielectric loss of the material. And that's very important to know for circuit design. Then there's a thermal coefficient of dielectric constant. That is a property that sometimes is overlooked and it's very important because what it is, it's how much the dielectric constant will change with temperature. And where that uh, gets some engineers is they will develop a circuit and uh, characterize it in a lab. And then once the circuit goes out into the real world and has uh, experiences a wide temperature swing, the dielectric constant will also change with it. And uh, when that dielectric constant changes, of course, the circuit performance can change as well. So understanding the thermal coefficient of dielectric constant, TCDK, is actually really important for some applications. Now, the uh, other properties on the data sheet that's pretty important for circuit fabrication are also properties that are pretty similar in concern for uh, circuit reliability. And the first one on that list would have to be CTE, or coefficient of thermal expansion. And basically, that's how much a circuit is going to expand or contract due to heating or cooling of the circuit. And CTE can be really important. Uh, there's a general rule of thumb that uh, CTE, uh, CTE of 70 parts per million per degree C is uh, that number is a good number or less for a uh, product to make good multi-layer circuits that will survive uh, the different thermal cycles it needs to go to for uh, circuit fabrication and assembly. Now, you ideally would want to get down around 17 parts per million per degree C for CTE because that's where copper is. That's the CTE of copper, and that's what you want to match to generally. But uh, there's been a lot of materials out there that have CTEs in the range of 40 or 50, and they do extremely well. So the CTE is important, and normally around 70 or less is good. Uh, peel strength is another uh, information that's on the data sheet, and that information some kind, sometimes could be misleading. The reason why is because peel strength intuitively is one of those things that uh, you think of how much the copper is bonded to the substrate, and that's true. But also, by the nature of peel strength testing, when you basically take the, uh, break the bond of the copper and peel it apart from the substrate, if you have a very rigid substrate that's uh, high uh, modulus, your break point is going to be very clean, and the break away and pulling it away is going to be very exact at that point. As compared to a low modulus soft material, when you break the bond and do the peel strength test, it's very soft and gummy, and you have more bonding area hanging on, and the peel strength numbers go up because of that. So you can have high peel strength, and that may not indicate how well the copper is actually bonded. It might be a test more of the modulus of the material. And uh, then thermal conductivity is another issue that can be important to circuit fabrication and the end use. And thermal conductivity is, in an example anyway, 
if you have a circuit with a warm chip on top of it, if you have a circuit material with high thermal conductivity, it helps move the heat through the circuit from the hot chip down to the heat sink very effectively. And that's a very good thing to keep the circuit a little cooler. Yeah, I'd like to invite you to come to the Rogers uh, website and join our uh, Technology Support Hub website. And on that website, we have a variety of information, of uh, technical information, free software, and uh, some technical advice as well. Thank you.